benefits from the involvement of students at all stages of their career. Therefore, we thought it would be nice for a few students from the community, one from each past year, to reflect on their experiences this past year and share with us their thoughts, struggles, and triumphs. First, I'd like to welcome our first year student, Mo Se Cho. Mo? Mo. Mo is studying economics in the College of Arts and Sciences. He's originally from Wyoming and is excited to have moved down to Cornell. Mo is currently involved in Taekwondo and, is, and just recently won the National Collegiate Tournament for Sparring in this division. He selected Arts and Sciences representative in the Student Assembly and is a research analyst at Nutri Investment Club of Cornell. Please join me in welcoming Mo. exactly what message I would like to uh, portray from this speech. How would I show exactly how much I have learned this past year at Cornell and just how much it has changed me? That is, until my friend Wei sent me a text saying, it'll come to you. Yeah, I guess it has because uh, here I am now with this speech. Um, I guess my involvement in this particular diversity community just came to me. I remember this day very clearly. It was start of second semester sitting in open shields and eating with a couple friends of mine, when suddenly I spotted the daily sun. I literally had never read the sun before this day, but for some reason I just felt compelled to read it. I opened to the opinions page where I saw Karen Zhu's article on what it means to be Asian American. Now before I get into how she opened my world through her article, here's a little background information. I was born in Rhode Island, raised her in the early teens in Oregon, and lived my tender years of adolescence in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Population, 50,000. Elevation, 6,000. <laughs> Asian population, pretty much me. <laughs> I came in as a second semester freshman, as the token Asian of not just my class, or high school, but probably Wyoming. <laughs> it was harsh. I missed all my old friends. I had a hard time making new ones, and dealt with a lot of subtle racism. But I grew strong from the adversity. I used the fact that I was the only Asian to my advantage. I got very involved in my school and community. I became my class and student body president, and I had volunteered enough to earn the Gold Congressional Medal. I had made a name for myself. Now back to Cornell. I was no longer the Asian. In fact, I was actually just an Asian. One of many. I had no name, no identity. Well, except the fact that I just naturally ended up only hanging out with Asians. Uh, it was completely unintentional. After a couple weeks, I realized all my friends and acquaintances were Asian. Pretty soon, I accidentally branded myself as just another Asian. That was not what I wanted. Uh, back to Oaken Shields. I luckily had stumbled upon Karen's article, speaking mainly of issues pointed towards Asian American identity issues, expectations, and stereotypes. I read the article multiple times. I couldn't stop talking about the article to my friends. It impacted me so much, I got in trouble during my freshman writing seminar reading it. I had, at this point, never reached out to anyone I didn't know, but I had to talk to this author. A couple of emails later, we finally met up at Live Cafe for coffee. She passionately brought up many topics about the issues on campus related to diversity and identity. What have I been doing this first semester? Dreaming? Not anymore. I sought out to meet as many involved and passionate student advocates as I could to learn the issues on campus. In the process, I learned many issues not just on being Asian American, but also racism, sexism, sexual orientation, and general demand for fairness. I tackled mental debates between equity and equality, social injustices, power and oppression, and social illusions. Coincidentally, at this time, I was also elected into the Student Assembly. I knew what my job would be, to be informed on as many issues on campus as possible, and to make sure my fellow elected representatives knew just as much as I did. It was a long and rewarding progression of growth and realization. I have learned so much this past semester, but more than anything else that I am thankful for, it is the people that I have met in the process. I have met some of the bravest and strong characters that I may ever meet in my entire life. Their stories of pain, suffering, and adversity, I believe have happened for a reason. I have also met some of the most pure, kind-hearted, selfless, hardworking, and genuine people. 
Some of them may not realize it yet, but they make more of an impact than they think they do. I met one with compassion and justice tattooed on the skin as a reminder to more than herself, but society as a whole. I experienced dinner time at Appel, chicken fried rice with a side of diversity initiatives. <laughs> I've also met my rock on campus, my sailor to guide me through this farm. It was because of these individuals that I have had the strength to stand here before you today, to fight for something bigger than myself, and hope to be the change that we would like to see in this world. Some may say that we're dreaming, but I think this world and community that we have become exposed to and involved in is the reality. I thank God in circumstances that I experienced Wyoming, that I read the article, that I emailed Karen, that I met so many great people, all in the meantime learning about myself and what I can do. Thank you to my friends for supporting me. Thank you for the community which backs me. And thank you everyone for listening to my story. <laughs>